In today's data log, the project would like to explore the heavily debated lifespan of the Manumula noxhydria, commonly referred to by its nickname of the face hugger. Many have pondered over the lifespan of this subspecies of Xenomorph XX121 and what the extent of its longevity is. While no recorded data exists on the topic that the project has been able to find, there still exists rumours and speculation due to the nature and role of the creature in its species life cycle. The Noxhydria's place in the Xenomorph XX121's life cycle is to this date understood to be singular and simple. Seek out and impregnate a host organism with Plagiaris praeopotens. The facehugger is required to do this rapidly and with as little effort as possible. Likewise, the creature seems to be opportunistic and somehow situationally aware. If a host is curious, the creature seems to be patient, waiting within its overmorph, its source of nutrients and its safe haven, holding off its attack long enough for the host to venture close enough where then the speedy attack by the Noxhydria will be too rapid for the host organism to react to. If the host is actively fighting or fleeing, the creature acts swiftly to subdue them, with a full frontal and ferocious barrage of taloned fingers and a powerful serpent-like tail to wrap around their neck. After the struggle to subdue the host and depositing its P. Praepotens packet, the face hugger falls from the host, dying, having completed its only known biological function. All of this suggests that the creatures are not supposed to survive very long outside of their overmorph houses. They are designed to survive within the egg being provided with nutrients uh, from it for very long periods of time. However, after leaving it, their time would seem to be limited. Every face hugger that has ever impregnated a host has resulted in the creature's death. However, what about reports of those that leave the egg but don't manage to secure a host? While few and far between, there are reports of the creatures surviving for a brief period following the emergence from their overmorphs and failing to obtain a viable host for its deadly payload. The Noxhydria specimens discovered by the Colonial Marine Squad sent to the colony of Hadley's Hope on LV-426 uh, for a uh, search and rescue mission in 2179 were responsible for making one of these reports. Once inside the colony of Hadley's Hope, they discovered the place deserted, save for a few remaining local inhabitants. These came in the form of collected and captured facehugger specimens. Given that the colony of Hadley's Hope had fallen to a xenomorph attack in days and weeks prior to the arrival of the colonial marines, it can be assumed that the facehuggers within the colony, uh, locked within the biomedical lab, had survived for just longer than that. However, while the argument could be made that they can stay alive for weeks, or possibly longer, I would like to investigate the fact that the creatures were being kept in some kind of liquid chambers. And while I can't say as to what was in the jars or the chambers, it's possible that it was a partly nutrient-rich uh, solution designed to keep the creatures alive for study. The recorded testimony of USCM uh, Captain Brackett, cross-referencing it with timestamps from around the events surrounding Hadley's Hope and its fall, suggests the limit of their longevity outside of the overmorph, but before being able to plant a host it's about 120 hours, or five days. While it seems that no bioweapons or research project has cared to discover the answer to this, or whether it's just not willing to make its findings public, it seems the next best thing to a true answer is rumor and speculation. While unsubstantiated, Agent 6 of Project Acheron's Operation Vigilance has recently reported on a situation he heard about whilst in deep cover in the UPP regarding the lifespan of a facehugger specimen. We will now play his transmission for analysis. This is agent number six. After my last transmission, I initiated my escape plan from the UPP. I grabbed the QSZ 
203 pistol from the Khrushchev's armory and headed to the emergency deck. The soldiers there almost put up some resistance to my attempt at access, but a hard look and a motion to my officer's rank was enough to shut them down hard. I quickly prepped the UPP DS-3 exhibitor escape shuttle for launch and went FTL before anyone on board the ship could react. It's easy to leave an entire life behind when it isn't yours. I went to sleep, and when I woke up, I was hoping to be far from the UPP. Three months later, I awakened to red flashing lights and danger warnings. The shuttle had dropped out of FTL. It was in bad shape. I should have expected this. Damn UPP in their quarter cutting. The shuttle was experiencing a cascading power loss. I had to put it down within a few hours risk drifting through space forever. Punched up the nav chart, realized I was still in UPP space, close to the borders of the UA and the Three World Empire. Hugh Allen Colony was an old mining settlement that had gotten prosperous at the edge of the UPP space in the Middle Heavens. Two million people spread out on a rainy ball, plenty of mom and pop spaceports to land in and disappear. I holstered my sidearm and got to work. I really had to bullshit the tower. They didn't seem to buy it, but they were at least going to let me land, which I barely managed to pull off. But the old piece of junk made it. It fell out of the sky just as it was about to land and crashed on the landing pad. I actually viewed this as a positive. I triggered the emergency exit and stormed out of the ship yelling to the fire crews, it's going to blow, it's going to blow. In the commotion of the explosion, I escaped notice and made it out of the spaceport. I made it to a back alley and tore the awards and rank of my duty uniform. I rolled the mud nearby after pissing in it to complete the disguise. I was going homeless by design. The best way to hide is to become invisible. I wrapped an old muddy tarp around my shoulders and sat cross-legged by the street up against the wall of the drugstore. Just another veteran in the street begging for change the endless rain. After a month, the MSS gave up looking on Wow and Colony for me. They tracked the shuttle here, but I suppose they assumed I took another ship off the colony. They were wrong. During my exile on the street, I struck up a temporary friendship with a fellow bum named Dimitri. He was a raging alcoholic, and on one particular thirsty day, he asked me if I wanted to listen to his story. I dismissed him and told him, all you want is a drink. No, nah, no, nah, this is truth. Dimitri is a bum and a drunk, but I never took the man for a liar. What's it going to cost me? I want to drink, my friend. I know you've been holding out, but there's a reason I want to tell you anyway. I had been holding out since the beginning. But in her extra smelly condition as the rain poured down upon us, we could still buy a bottle of cheap vodka. So I entered a liquor store nearby and emerged with a bottle in hand. We sat down in the alley under the tarp we were living under and got pissed drunk in the afternoon. Then Dimitri suddenly got serious. His features turned to stone and he started to tell me this story. I was a navigator on a salvage crew. We were on our way back here when Mother picked up a burst of static that appeared to be a distress call. It pulled us all out of Piper's sleep. The call was from the Netranto, a freighter that had gone missing a few years ago. It had a Star Cub escape shuttle docked with it when we got there. And we had to cut it off to access the airlock. The atmosphere was gone. No hull breach, but no oxygen. We boarded in spacesuits, found a dead man with a hole in his chest on board, and a disabled Hope android. You know, one of those blonde female looking ones, Hyperdyne, discontinued a while back. We had stripped the flight recorder out, and we were on our way back to our ship, when something big snatched our main engineer off his feet. He screamed like a he was in the grip of the devil himself. No one saw what it was, and we did not wait to find out. We got the hell out of there. As the airlock closed, the engineer's suit was flatlined. 
The captain took no chances. We immediately started looking through the flight logs to see what happened to the ship. Only for us to realize that the Hope Moto Android had erased the flight log and then repeated the day 458 for a long time. How long? I don't know. But after a while, the hope started breaking down. It cut into a laboratory on the ship. We found something strange. It looked like a cross between a spider and your worst nightmare. Three days after the hope broke that thing out of stasis, it started treating the spider thing as a pet. It started to die. The hope put out the distress call. Yes, I know, it's very strange, but the hope itself was breaking down, losing motor function. Poor bastard had responded to the SOS. The record said his name was McWill. The Hope fed him to her spider. The last 458 day log showed something had burst out of McWill and grown very large, very fast. The former salvage ship navigator took a long pull from the bottom. About to try to think of some way to destroy this ship when a government warship showed up. They threatened us all and took the flight to the port. We came home here to Hualan Color, but one by one we began to disappear. I had no family, so I hid in this place. Dimitri raised his hands like he was showing the place off, then took another large drink. The point of my story is I know who you are, and you're not the only one running. Not everyone here is who they see. You may have more friends here than you know. I was stunned by Dimitri's admission and crazy story. I didn't completely believe it because it could be the stupid ramblings of a dumb drunk. Similarities to Xenomorph Double X One Two One and the story were apparent. Dimitri got completely blackout drunk and passed out an hour later. I decided to finish off the bottle. I decided to set up shop here in New Allen Colony for a few months, Director. It will take a while to get a ship here anyway. People out here on the frontier have begun to realize there's something dark and dangerous out there, even if it's just rumors. I intend to see if there is more secondhand information out there and incidents the project may not have knowledge of. Stand by for further transmissions. Six out. So again, whilst this story and the details within it are almost impossible to substantiate, it does again line up with what we have already discovered about the creatures. That they seemingly only are able to survive outside of the Overmore for a few days, perhaps a week or two at very max, before running out of biological resources and energy, and their metabolism ceases to continue. If you really want to support what we do here and gain a bunch of awesome rewards, consider joining as a Project Acheron channel member, like Project Director Chris Dussinger, Company Representatives uh, The Sixness, M56 Smart Gunner, and Sith Lord 906, and like team members, Raunchy, Ambrosia, The Ryan Smee, and Jack Fleming Jr. I hope to see and hear from you all again very soon. Project Acheron, bringing the knowledge and the power directly to you.